In this uh, short video, I'm showing you how to use uh, Melt Flow Indexer from HP Plastic Makina. This is basic machine from HP Plastic Makina with two weight. First one is 2.16. Uh, both together uh, is uh, 5 kg. It is coming to you with hopper, with piston, with cleaning rod, brass cleaning rod, with a rod with a pin for the cleaning of the die, with steel tray, with uh, paper for thermal printer. Basic machine has touch screen, 7 inch touch screen. Thermal printer installed uh, on the unit for the printout of the last report. Also, it has USB data output for printing uh, for the export of the data for Microsoft Excel in computer. Uh, first of all, you need to set the temperature. The temperature is uh, here. Temperature setting is here. It is uh, 190 for polyethylene, 230 for polypropylene. Uh, for uh, Temperature you need to check the specification of the material that melt low index uh, rate measurement temperature how much is the uh, the um, MFR measurement for that specific material if it is uh, 190 or 230 and so on the, the cutting time is defined based on the table uh, in the ISO 1133 this is uh, 5 second, 15 second, uh, 60 second, uh, 120, 240. It is defined uh, based on the melt flow rate that you read uh, in the ISO 1133 standard and set the cutting interval here. Number of cut uh, is 5 is enough for measurement based on type A. Uh, of, of, uh, according to the standard after setting the temperature you need to click on heating on heat on when you click on heat on uh, it is in green and it shows that the heating uh, started uh, that's all uh, for setting the temperature you have two heating element first one in the bottom side of the cylinder and the other one is in the top side of the cylinder this machine has two thermal sensor and two heating elements and the specification for these uh, two heating elements and calibration parameter is defined here. Op sensor, this is set value for op sensor. Down sensor is here and this is set value for down sensor. You can set them separately. Also you can set the offset parameter for the down and upper sensor. This is the parameter for calibration purpose. I will show you how to use this parameter for calibration purpose of the machine. And also when you are changing the heating element, here you have the auto-tune of the heating elements. After changing the heating elements, you can auto-tune the parameters, PID parameters of the controller for the machine. For both controller in the up sensor, you have auto-tuning and in the down sensor, you have also auto-tuning for the controller. Uh, that's all after setting the temperature wait at least for 20 minutes for the whole cylinder to be stabilized and the set temperature now the set temperature is 190 and the present value is 189.8 and we just uh, we've just waited uh, for 20 minutes and we can start the test now uh, for filling this, the, the sample, the granule or whatever, or uh, uh, grinded pieces from the product, you can fill in the cylinder. 3 to 5 gram of the material is enough. Uh, I'm filling the cylinder like this. For, not, uh, for the hopper not to be blocked uh, with the granule material, you need to, to fill it very slowly, like what I'm doing here, slowly. Yes. While you're filling the material, you need to to push it for the airing of the the air from the granules and push for a while and then fill it again. Yes, I think that's enough. I'm just putting the piston here 
You see, uh, there are two markings on the piston. The, f the first marking, the bottom, the bottom marking on the piston uh, need to be higher than the top, uh, top section of the cylinder. You need to, sh to see this marking. And the measurement always need to be started when this marking reaches the top of the cylinder. Yes, that's all. After filling the, uh, the material inside the cylinder, you need to wait for the material to be homogenized in terms of temperature, in, 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 length, in length of the cylinder, whole material need to be, uh, to be homogenized uh, with the temperature of the set value of the machine. If it is uh, low value MFI material, you can also put the lower weight on the piston. If it is very high value of MFI for the material you're going to test, you, uh, the piston itself is enough and no need for putting another weight on this. Also be noted that uh, with the uh, uh, the, the cylinder of the machine need to be completely vertical and you need to adjust the, uh, the machine in such a, a position that the cylinder is in vertical and when you're putting the piston on the cylinder inside the cylinder it is not to be inclined and it should be completely vertical. Yes, I'm waiting at least four minutes for the material to be homogenized in temperature and, uh, and after I will start uh, the test with uh, 5 kg, it is polyethylene. When you're filling the material inside the cylinder, the temperature will be dropped for, uh, for, for some degrees, one or two degrees. That is because of that, this material is in room temperature and the cylinder is set uh, on 190 degrees centigrade and when you Filling the cold material inside the, the cylinder, the drop you see here, the temperature will be dropped for a while. Now uh, the set value is 190 and it shows 187.7 and you need to wait for the temperature to be stabilized on 190. At least 4 minutes, 4 minutes is enough, 4 or 5 minutes is enough and uh, then we will uh, start cutting. Okay, we, uh, we've been waited for uh, four, four minutes and uh, now you see the temperature uh, being stabilized and it's just 190, 189.8 and now I'm putting the weight here. It is polyethylene and I'm putting 5 kg weight on the piston and uh, I'm starting the test. Yes, I'm starting the test. You can click on start. The first cutout, you see the first cutout, you need to put it aside. Uh, be noted that the time need to be, not to be set in such a way that the length of the sample piece uh, going below 10 millimeter. And if you know nothing about the melt flow rate of the material you're going to test, Set the time in such a way that uh, the sample cut out length uh, not to be less than 10 millimeter, maybe 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter is okay, is okay if you know nothing about the melt flow rate of the material. And uh, according to the norm, uh, you cannot define the cutting time in the beginning. Then start with a time that the, the length of the samples being 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter, 15 millimeter and, and after defining the first, the, the melt flow rate in the first test, you can define the correct cut out time from the standard based on the calculate, based on the measured melt flow rate for the material. Yes, uh, you see it's counting down, the timer is counting down and after 120 seconds it will cut the first sample. Yes, timer is counting, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, 2, 1, and now the first cut, we have the first cut here. We will wait for the other 4, first, uh, for the four uh, cut out of the samples.
Now we are going for the second uh, cutout. Yeah, this is second cutout. Even with two pieces, we can measure the um, uh, the melt flow rate. I'm showing you how to measure. You see? Uh, okay, let's go for the balance. I have precise balance here. Uh, the resolution is uh, 0 0.1 milligram. You see, uh, four zero after dot. I'm putting these two sample piece here to wait. I'm putting two sample piece here. The value is uh, 60 weight. To read the correct value, 68, 0.6858. It was two sample piece, and uh, this will be 0.34. Twenty-eight, I think. Yes, and for hundred twenty second, the value is this one. For ten minute, that is sixty second. MFR, MFR is six hundred multiplied by three four two eight. divided by 120. This will be the value for the melt flow rate. Okay, you see that the weight, the mass for the two pieces was this. The average value is this one. For 120 second, the average value was this one, 0 0.3429 for 600, because we want to present melt flow rate in 10 minutes, and it is 600 second. And the melt flow rate will be 600 multiplied by 0 0.3429 divided by 120 and the value is 1.7. The unit is gram per 10 minute because we calculated in 600 seconds and the value will be this. Also, we can. Uh, also, the machine will be. We, uh, the machine is able to calculate the melt flow rate based on the, uh, this average value. Let me show you. You see that the average value uh, of the mass for the cutout pieces, for two pieces, you can also calculate, measure it for four pieces or five pieces. For two pieces, the average weight was this value, and. Um, uh, Putting the average weight here, 0 0.3429, you can put it 3, and enter, and the melt flow rate will be this one, yes, 1.715, now you can print it out, yeah. um, you can print this result like this. Showing the melt flow rate here, the weight, I just tested with 5 kg, the other parameters, customer operator time and and uh, all of the information, the company website, you can follow the info posts in our website, uh, info center, you can check the specification of the machine and uh, also don't forget to follow our social media YouTube channel, Facebook uh, page and also Facebook group. You will find many, many uh, the technical information about our products and testing procedures. Uh, the other parameter that we have here is, uh, is in this page. I just talked about the parameters for the upper sensor and lower sensor. You can use it for calibration. Uh, I will show you how to calibrate the machine now. Uh, first of all, I'm showing you the cleaning. For cleaning, use the uh, gloves like this, gloves like this, and uh, 
first I need to clean the dye. You need a tissue. Yes, this one. You can open, pull it, push it from the side, and you will have dye in hand. Clean the dye hole rapidly. Not, don't let the material to be cooled down. And using this tissue, clean the dye in this way. It's easy. Yes. For the faces of the dye, you can clean with cutter. Now you see it's easy. Now dye is clean. For the piston, the next step is piston. Don't let it cool down and clean it rapidly like this. Piston is clean. And use another piece of tissue for cleaning the cylinder itself. Mm -hmm. Put it here with a brass rod. Clean the, the cylinder. After each test, you need to clean it. Then push it, close the, the barrier for the die and put the die in this way into the cylinder like this yeah done yes that goes to the bottom uh, of the cylinder and now it is ready for the next test this is the cleaning procedure and for calibration purpose you will uh, do like this. You need a thermometer. Uh, there are different kinds of thermometers in hand. This is two channel thermometer. You can use other types and uh, uh, maybe you have other types of sensors. This is K type thermocouple. You can also use uh, uh, PT100 that is, that is more precise than K, K tip uh, thermocouples also. Uh, you can use multi-channel thermometer, you can use other types, that is a uh, metal rod, uh, 30 centimeter metal rod. Uh, now I have this one in hand and I want to check the temperature. If machine is showing the temperature right or not, or wrong. Just uh, put the thermocouple next to the die. I'm just using both of these sensors, just next to die. Yes, this uh, I just put the sensors at the end of the cylinder that is that is the touching the die and I'm waiting for the, the 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 sensors for reading the temperature. Let's wait and after being stabilized, both uh, the the thermocouple sensors readings are stabilized. I will show you how to calibrate it. Uh, based on the uh, standard for calibration, you need to fill the cylinder with the material and wait for uh, 15 minutes or 40 minutes for the material to be homogenized in temperature of the cylinder and then uh, start reading. If you have such thermocouple that is metal rod, uh, it's better to use this kind of thermocouple. Fill the cylinder with material, wait for the, for the temperature stabilization, then put the, the sensor of the thermometer inside the material. If you have a wire type thermocouple like this, you can also check the temperature, but more accurate is using the material inside the cylinder. Now I'm putting this one as well uh, to check the temperature.
Yes, uh, I just put uh, this type of thermocouple and the cylinder, now the cylinder is empty. I just put the wire of the K-tip thermocouple at the end of the cylinder that is that touches the, the end of uh, uh, the, the top surface of the die. Also, you can use this metal rod thermocouple. You can fill the cylinder with material. This is the right way according to the norm. You need to fill the cylinder and put such kind of thermocouple inside the sensor and and check the difference between the temperature that is shown here and the temperature that is shown on the indicator. Now I'm using, this is two channel thermocouple, I'm using one channel. It shows 189.8 and here it shows 190.6 and I can set this offset. Uh, for example, now the, the, dif the difference here, you, you see the reference indicator, Sh please show the reference indicator, it is 189.9 and here we have 190.6, the difference is 0 0.7 less, I need to add 0 0.7 degree centigrade to this present value, I need to go to here, the setting of the upper uh, up and down sensors, there, the, the current value of offset is this one, I need to add this value to 0 0.7. I mean the current value plus 0 0.7. Meaning that uh, it should be uh, 0 0.8 minus, I just added it with 0 0.7 uh, 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 minus, par pardon, minus this one. I just added 0 0.7 to the current value, to the past value. It was minus 1.1 plus 0 0.7. It should be minus 0 0.8. And I need to do the same with the, uh, the other sensor. And now it is calibrated and the machine will be calibrated in, in, in terms of temperature. This is the procedure. Also, you have the saving page here. You can, you can set the parameters here. Company, customer, operator, uh, four letter for the operator, for the customer, company, date and time will be saved automatically. You can click on save. Also here, you can click on save. The new row will be created here, including date, time, company, customer, operator, weight of the uh, sample and so on the result melt flow rate result number of cut and 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 uh, when you put the flash disk on here and click on export to USB you will have the Excel data including all these data Excel table including all these all the saved data in the memory of the machine uh, that's all uh, this is a basic melt flow index tester from AHP Plastic Makina. Don't forget to follow us on our social media and YouTube channel. Thank you all. Bye.